Hi guys, it's Poppy. The Windrush Foundation reached out and asked me to have a discussion around some of the mental challenges that riders will be facing over the coming months. While I certainly don't have all the solutions to this new scenario that we find ourselves in, I really hope that by starting the discussion we can open up the channels of communication between riders and also have a look at some perhaps new perspectives and new ways to look at these current challenges. It's really important that we keep sharing information, that we keep um, supporting each other in our community and that way we can continue to grow, develop and progress even if our sport has slowed down slightly. So the three topics that I want to discuss today are firstly the financial worries and how that's going to impact riders and how it's very easy to um, struggle with those thoughts in your own head. The second thing I want to talk about is the lack of focus when it comes to not having any dates to aim at or any competitions. And the third thing is how to sustain your confidence over this time. So quite a few people would have built up to this point, would have just started their season and now it's all ground to a halt. So how do we really keep that momentum, keep the confidence going um, and really hit the ground running when we do finally get the green flag? The financial concerns that are associated with what's going on at the moment are a legitimate concern for everybody and they can be extremely difficult um, when we're overplaying them in our heads. So the first thing I would say is that we do need someone that we can talk to about this stuff. Often when we run our own business we tend to carry a lot of the concern by ourselves. We tend to internalize it. We may fear uh, people judging us, a fear of failure, a fear, a fear of what we might look like to our friends or family. A lot of us when we start our own business feel like maybe we have something to prove to the rest of the world or we really really want to achieve something and when we're threatened with financial difficulties that can hit home really really hard. So the first thing I would say is that you need to communicate your concerns with someone. There is many, many people at home at the moment sitting behind laptops um, that would be more than happy to have a conversation with you. Lots and lots of people have been through this situation financially before, maybe not this exact one, but there's people out there that are really willing to help, even if it's just a family member. The second thing I would say is that it would be really, really easy to become a victim in our own heads of what's going on. So um, internalizing all of that kind of stuff can really, really turn you into a victim within your own mind, which makes you go down the rabbit hole, feel like the world is coming in on top of you, the world's against you, you can't achieve what you wanted to achieve, everything's going wrong. All of the stuff that is going on at the moment is completely out of our control. So what we do need to come back to is focusing on what is in our control. Many of us use the distraction of competition as an excuse, I guess, not to uh, really have a good look at our business models or our business workings. So most of us have an idea that there's cash coming in from certain elements and there's cash going out. But what we don't know is what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, where maybe more money is going out than should be, where our costs are high um, and where we really play strongly to make the most money. So this is a fantastic time to sit down with yourself and your business and actually have a look at the numbers. Really, really start to analyze and look at what you have in front of you. A lot of the fear around finance comes from the unknown. So the first thing that we need to establish is a baseline of what we have in front of us. Things will change, but by understanding what impact money has and where it has that impact, we at least give ourselves some kind of control. People tend to put off looking at the numbers because it's scary, uh, they don't want to get the shock of it, but once you actually do that, it tends to empower you because it makes you realise where you need to pull up your socks potentially, where you need to cut back and what you can do yourself to make a difference. So use this time rather than... Um, Rather than becoming a victim and starting to focus on all the things that you can't control, it's really important that we focus on what we can control. And that's our baseline, understanding what we have, why we have it, and how that works. 
that in itself will give you a little bit of confidence going forward on what you should be focusing on rather than just grabbing at straws um, and hoping things are going to get better, hoping the cash flow improves. So as a side note on a positive, I think it's really important that we remember that as a equestrian athlete, we are part of a much, much bigger community than we even realize. It might seem quite lonely, quite isolated over the next couple of weeks when we're stuck at home, stuck at our own stables. But what we do have on our side is that we are part of this really, really large global sport that is accelerating at a phenomenal rate. Um, that is exciting to people, that sponsors want to be involved in, that is growing and growing and growing. And we may have been stopped in our tracks, but we are right back and ready to go as soon as we get the green flag. And having that sense of community, having that idea that this is bigger than just I am. And when this starts again, my community is ready to go. It's ready to fight for what it believes in. It's ambitious, it's energetic. And the possibilities that we believed in before all this happened still exist. So yes, we need to take a small step back, a small breath, a small survival um, period. But when this does go back, our sport is still as ambitious, still as full of possibilities as it was when before this stopped. And I really, really believe that it's going to motivate people more. I think it's going to create new opportunities in the long run. And I think people are just going to be more driven um, to enjoy it, to make the most of the sport and to grow it globally. So while this part seems pretty miserable um, and pretty stagnant, I think that as a group of people, we're so lucky to have that sense of community, to be part of something that's bigger than just ourselves and to be able to have something to look forward to when this all ends. We are not just going back to jobs, we're going back to our passion and that's a lot more than most people can say.